Hello and welcome back to Connor Thomas Health. Today we're going to be talking about something that I think is so important and so applicable to just about every relationship that we have in our life, whether that be our relationship with our significant other, our kids, coworkers, our job as a boss, or any other responsibilities we have at work, other family members, friends, or just people we come in contact with on a daily basis. It is so easy to implement. And honestly, it's probably something we come in contact with almost every day, if not every day. I'm sure at this point you're just wondering like, what is it? Give me the details, let's move on. So let's. So here we go. What I'm talking about is validating one's emotions or experiences. This is key to helping a relationship grow. And it, just to kind of, you know, see where we're at, I'm gonna kind of give you an example. You know, let's say, and we've all seen it or we've maybe been a part of it. Let's say we're at a grocery store and we see a kid, he's crying because he's either, you know, he doesn't want to be there, he's tired, maybe he wants his mom to buy him a toy and she's saying no, so he's just throwing a fit. You know, we all probably try not to look that way. We all try not to make eye contact with that mom. And, you know, the we might even overhear or the mom often says, Stop making a scene, stop crying, get your stuff together. Um, other times maybe an example is a spouse might say, I feel like you just don't love me anymore. And the response we often give might be like, oh, that's ridiculous. I love you very much. What we just did or what we just saw there was we invalidated someone's emotion, both with the kid and the parent, as well as with the two significant others. And that can really harm a relationship. And in the case of maybe a parent and a child, that can really harm someone's attachment and really, you know, affect how they are with relationships in their future. So an alternative to doing that is what's called just validating their emotion. So going back to that relationship, maybe between like two significant others, I feel like you just don't love me anymore. You know, maybe if like my spouse were to say that to me, I'd say, I'm sorry to hear that. What do I do that makes you feel that way? And, st and that can really help them feel heard validated and we can really grow in that area when on the other side if I say that's ridiculous what I did is actually I took two steps backwards now my spouse already feels unloved and now they feel ridiculous for even feeling that way and more than likely they're not going to open up moving forward this is so important you know our job as a parent you know if we are in that situation they might say you know you just don't love me anymore you know you can respond, I'm sorry to hear that. That makes me sad. You know, especially with kids, they might say this when they they might not get in their way. Oftentimes, we might just dismiss it and actually take a step backwards. It is so important to make sure we're validating those feelings, those emotions, and using that as a way to take steps forward instead of backwards. Specifically with talking about parents, research shows that parents only need to hit the mark 30% of the time. That doesn't sound like that much, especially when we think about our job as parents is probably the most important job we'll ever have, especially because we have the responsibility and the privilege to set them on a path where they can really, you know, either flourish or if they're going to have attachment wounds and attachment issues, those can really turn into traumas and negative beliefs that make it hard to relate to people moving forward. Um, such as their significant other, friends, or coworkers. I mean, if you think about it, if they felt like their own parent didn't love them, it's gonna be really hard for them to feel like they're loved by their significant other or they're cared for by their friends and other relationships in that way. So let's kind of unpack that a little bit and kind of see what we mean. You know, specifically, you know, going back, the best example is usually always parents and children. So maybe the kid's going to say, you know, they're struggling in school. Maybe school just started. They're having a little bit of anxiety that, and they say something like, I feel like I'm so stupid. A parent oftentimes will say, that's ridiculous. You get all A's and B's. Or you know that's not true. You get all A's and B's. Something along those lines. When really, you didn't really do anything to change their emotions or the beliefs that they have about themselves. They already feel like they're stupid and you didn't say anything anything to contradict that you didn't say anything to validate their emotions you know maybe you contradict it by saying their grades which you know it goes back to there's oftentimes two parts to most people and most situations 
there's often, and I even like when I do it with my clients, I even put my hand on my head to kind of represent it. There's oftentimes the logical part of things. Logically, we know that kid's probably on a pretty good path right now, especially with his grade. You know, he's getting all A's and B's. You know, logically, we know probably not stupid. However, in his heart and in his gut, his feelings, the beliefs he has, he or she has about themselves, they feel like, I'm stupid. I'm not good enough. When we hear someone say that, you know, I feel like I'm really stupid, you know, maybe because they're just frustrated because they're struggling with a homework assignment. That's an opportunity to be like, I'm sorry to hear you, you know, you're having some of those negative beliefs about yourself. What makes you feel stupid? Let's talk about that. And that really, instead of taking a step backwards, that can really open it up. And that kid might feel like, wow, like my parent cares. They want to know me. They want to encourage me. Um, Other examples, you know, maybe one spouse, you know, really values dates and quality time. So like, you know, he or she probably can't get enough of that in their relationship. Something they might say to their spouse is, I feel like we don't spend enough time together. When the person hearing that might be like, what are you talking about? We just went on a date two nights ago. If you say that, you know, that's really just going to shut down that conversation. And that spouse that said something about not going on enough dates or not feeling like we don't spend enough time together, they're just going to feel closed off and like their significant other doesn't care. So when maybe the spouse or the significant other does come forward and say, I feel like we haven't gone on a date in a while or we don't spend enough time together. The better response would be like, I'm sorry to hear that. I want to make you feel like we spend enough time together and I do value taking you on dates. What would that look like? What would it look like to feel like we're going on enough dates or that I want to spend time with you? Again, instead of you know being a fracture in the relationship, that's a step forward of growth change and continuation of the relationship and you know the research all i mean the research always shows this because there will be times where you mess up either as a parent or a spouse or a boss you're just you know maybe have too much going on at that time and you're not fully present you know you do kind of dismiss their you know experience or their emotion and instead of kind of validating them like i said you dismiss it However, when you make that mistake, if you can own it, if you can go to them later and ask for forgiveness or say, you know, I wasn't fully listening or I responded poorly, you know, that can actually repair that rupture in the relationship and can actually move forward in a better place than it was before that conversation even took place. So that's just something to know and something to consider. Like you will mess up, you know, as a parent, you know, like I said, If parents only have to like, you know, hit that mark 30% of the time to be a good enough parent and that's what they need, you know, our job as a spouse or as coworkers or a boss to a coworker or our friends, it's even less than 30%. So just keeping that in mind and again, just trying to validate over and over again. This is not just a one-time conversation, especially if it's a relationship that's deep and intimate and you're trying to have some kind of vulnerability or growth it's validating over and over again because this happens so often you know someone says maybe they you know their spouse says i don't feel like i'm good at my job you know that's ridiculous you've been doing this for 10 years you're an expert well you didn't validate so just going back you know maybe they're just having a rough day so be like i'm you know it sounds like you're having a rough day what makes you feel like you're not good at your job just listening first trying to validate trying to identify any of those emotions And sometimes, you know, maybe you will miss the mark there as well. You identify an emotion that's not really present. So maybe it sounds like, you know, you you, instead of saying maybe like something like, well, it sounds like you're really overwhelmed. The other person might be like, "Um, it's not really overwhelmed. It's more so, you know, I'm just kind of confused with my job right now. So if you do mess up, the example I'm kind of giving right there is that The other person will often correct you because all they really want to know is that you're trying, that you're having some kind of empathy and that unconditional positive regard and trying to grow in that area and listen. That's what really matters. That's what means you're trying to hit that mark, even if it's not perfect. So again, just, you know, when someone's having some kind of emotions and sometimes we can tell, sometimes we can tell there's tears, sometimes we can tell because they're shaking out of anger or something like that, or maybe they're just really closed off and not saying very much. You know, if we think there's kind of some kind of emotion there, 
trying to validate that first, trying to validate the experience. So just keep an eye out. I guarantee you'll find it in some relationships in the next week or so. Thanks for tuning in to Connor Thomas Health. I hope this helps you live a healthy and meaningful life.